right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to AP Chemistry. This is probably one of your first lectures of the year. If it's not the first, it's very, very close to the beginning of the year. And uh, I want to say welcome. Welcome. We're going to have fun this year. And here we go. Um, today we're going to take a look at the law of definite proportions. Uh, this law is also called Proust's Law or the law of constant composition is another one or, or, or another name for it that is kind of more descriptive about what it's going to tell us and what we're going to do with it. Um, and so really what you need to know about this is what the law actually states, what it's about. And so the law of uh, definite proportion tells us that elements will combine to form compounds in very specific ratios. All right, so definitely something you want to write down there, that elements will combine to form compounds in very specific ratios. All right, so one example that we will look at right off the bat is something you're probably familiar with and have heard of. I know you've heard of carbon dioxide. You made it through first year chemistry, right? And so carbon dioxide, if we were to take a look at the molecule itself, has one carbon atom and then two oxygen atoms. There you go. Make those oxygens about the same size. And so what we see here is that carbon dioxide, no matter what carbon dioxide molecule we're looking at, is always going to be one carbon atom and two oxygen atoms. And so when we do that, we can say, all right, that's going to be a one to two molar ratio. Now, if you're thinking back to your, your, your first year chemistry days, we understand that moles are really just a description of quantity, right? And so we can look at these masses and say, all right, what does that actually tell us? And so we'll look at the mass of a carbon dioxide molecule. If we're going to do formula mass, we've got carbon, we've got oxygen. I'll go ahead and do this with you here. Uh, I've got 12 grams per mole for the average atomic mass of carbon. I've got 16 grams per mole for the average atomic mass of oxygen. There's two of these present. Get rid of that guy. There's two of these present, and so that's times eh, 44 grams per mole. Easy math. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm abbreviating these or, or rounding these numbers, all right? And so the formula mass of carbon dioxide is 44 grams per mole. And so what does that really tell us, right? Well, we can take that molar ratio. We can actually figure out by mass what percentage carbon is of carbon dioxide. Now, this is, again, where some of y'all are going to start thinking, hey, I've seen this before. All right. So we look at our carbon. We've got 12 grams per mole divided by the total mass here. We're going to turn it to a percentage. And we're going to say that carbon is 27% by mass of carbon dioxide. We'll take a look at the oxygen here. We'll say there's 32 grams present out of the 44 times 100% here to get us 73% oxygen. And so not a big thing. Probably most of you are looking at this and you're going, oh, that's just percent composition from pre-AP chemistry or from my first year chemistry course. And it is. It's not anything crazy. And so now we get into the point, because I know we did this, what do we do with it? And so we'll start taking a look. Let me get rid of this here. Let's see. If we take two samples, I've got a 55 gram sample of carbon dioxide. I've got an 18 gram sample of carbon dioxide. And we want to ask the question, how much carbon? And then the other part of that question, how much oxygen do we have in those samples? And so it's not anything crazy. Remember, percentages tell us, you know, that part of the whole. And so we'll take a look here and we'll say, all right, that's pretty simple, Doolin. I'll take 55 grams here, multiply that dot 0.27. Notice I have to convert that percentage back to a decimal. And that's going to give me, if you do the math on that, about 14.2. Nine grams. So if I had a 55 gram sample of carbon dioxide, I would be able to retrieve, if I got 100% of it, 14.9 grams of carbon. The other side of that is also true. I'm going to say if I've got a 55 gram sample, 73% of that, or 0.73, should be oxygen. And so I'm looking here and I've got 40.2 grams of oxygen present in that 55 gram sample. So not a big deal again. Looking in the 18 gram sample, the, the, the big thing to understand here is the law of definite proportion allows us to use these percentages no matter what the sample size. Because by percentage, by that ratio, the percentage will always be constant. The, the ratio will always be 
constant as long as we're looking at CO2. All right. So now what we're going to do is we'll just change the beginning mass here at 18 grams times 0.27. That's going to be 4.86 grams. And then we'll take a look. 18 grams times 0.73 equals 13.1 grams. And so how do we use law of definite proportions? We can definitely use the law of definite uh, of definite proportions to figure out how much of an element is present in a sample. And this gets us into empirical formulas, um, allows us to start, start looking at the purity of samples because let's think about the purity here. Pure CO2 will always, and I'm capitalizing always, and I'm going to underline it, be 27% carbon and 73% oxygen by mass. So here we go. I'm looking at a 55 gram sample of carbon dioxide. I'm going to plug it into something and I'm going to expect to get 14.9 grams of carbon out of it. If I get something different, my sample probably wasn't pure ore. Either I'm missing some carbon dioxide or I've got another source of carbon that's in my sample that's a contaminant. And so we use law of definite proportions as well to verify purity of substances. And so those are our two ways that we're going to be able to use the law of definite proportions and two ways that will come up and be embedded in so many different things. All right. And so make sure you understand we can use it here. Um, to figure out exactly how much of, an, of a given element by mass that we've got in the sample. And then we can also use it to check purity of samples because we know how much based on that proportion should actually be in that sample. All right. Okay. Well, hopefully that was clear enough for you. If you've got any questions, please make sure you come and see me in tutorials or ask your questions in class when we go over this. Um, and I will see you there. Thank you for tuning in. We're going to have a great year.